FC Food Four Seven. You're live in a mix. I'm your host, Twism White Peace, and today we've got a one of a kind interview with none other than the rock star journalist herself, Eileen Shapiro. And when I say you're in for a blast, are you in for a blast? So come join this journey with us as we take you down her past, her present, her future, talking about her book and several of the stars that she has interviewed. And of course, man, this is an iconic journalist who has ventured through music, TV, and film with such stars as Rosie O'Donnell, Leonard Nimoy, Diana Ross, Dion Warwick, Cindy Lauper, Annie Lennox, CeCe Peniston, Flavor Flav, Billy Hess, Whoopi Goldberg, and so many more, including, not to mention myself, who's a white piece, Miss Eileen Shapiro. How are you today? I am great, and how are you? I am wonderful. I'm thrilled to have you on the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And of course, how is the weather out there? It's 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 hot like your weather. Yeah. Hot, <laughs> sticky, and hot. <laughs> now you said you were in New York, so are you on the upper part of New York, the lower part of New York, uh, New York City itself? Where where in circulation New York, are you? New York, big place. I am on Long Island, about an Long hour Island. minutes from the city. And I am in Suffolk County, Long Island, which is kind of, I guess, on the lower end. Okay. So, so I'm not state. I'm not near. Like I'm nine hours from Toronto. Okay. Okay. All right. Not I know. Toronto. I, I got you. I understand. Yeah. See, well, I'm from Indianapolis, and Indianapolis is about about twelve hours away. So it's there you go. Not the same distance, right? Now, with all the COVID and everything, have you yourself? personally experienced anything close to home or have you been shielded and and in your house doing what you're supposed to do or how's that played out for you well i'm not exactly doing what i'm supposed to do but i don't even know anyone personally that has had it or, or actually you know i know of people that say they've had it and they've been tested and this that and the other thing and that they have had it but i don't know anyone seriously ill i don't know anyone like in my immediate whatever that has right. it um, right. And I hope that continues. <laughs> yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah, definitely. So, uh, what 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 is your whole thoughts on it? I mean, this is this is obviously the biggest topic of the year, probably the biggest topic of the last decade, hundred years, if not, you know. So, what is what's your opinion on this? You think, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there crying foul, a hoax. Uh, a lot of people say uh, it's all conspiracy. A lot of people say that this is something real. You need to take it seriously. Where do you stand on that? Well, you know what? This is what I think. I It might be a conspiracy. It might be. I'm not ruling that out. I'm not really ruling out anything. But here's the but. So I think that out of this time, people have become super, super creative. Mm -hmm. And I think that in the realm of things, what has to happen happens, no matter what you do anyway. And I think there's a reason for everything. And there must be a reason for this. And whatever the, it's, it's surreal, it's crazy. We've never gone through anything like it. It's historic. Yeah. But I think that I think that out of it, there's going to be some really good creative things going on, you know, in the future. And, and you know, for, for my, my clients, it, it, it's been kind of cool because, you know, they want to stay relevant. And all people can do now is listen, watch, you mm -hmm. know, and learn. Yeah. And yeah. So, you know, for, for me, Besides all, all the pain that everyone's suffering, I'm like kind of liking it. So, <laughs> I, 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 I personally, I'm a performing artist, so, so of course, Thank you know, you. I miss getting on the stage and everything, right? Um, but it has definitely opened my eyes to the possibility of other forms of entertainment. You know, one of the things that I've learned through my course of my career is that you're. You, you have to be more than good at what you like more than good. You have to be great at more than one thing. So you have to be more than good at more than one thing. Right. And the whole realm behind that idea and thinking is that you have to teach yourself whatever you don't know in order to appeal to your fans, to your followers, to the people supporting you. So I think this time has been a really great for myself. eye opening as to, what exactly I can be capable of and what exactly I needed to learn more of, you know, as far as entertainment. I always thought it was so easy. Just go get on stage, rock a great show and be done with it. But then when you take out the shows, it's kind of like, 
you know, football and basketball players. When you took out the football and basketball, what's left? You know what I mean? So no, it's that's true. And I, you know, my heart goes out to all you performers and 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 concert. I mean, I miss going to concerts myself. Yeah. yeah. Oh there yeah. Was excitement and adventure about it that you know is unlike anything that anyone's experienced yes. unless you've experienced it. Man. And, <laughs> but the thing is, when it does open up. People are going to be like dying to go to concerts, so I think there'll be more of them than there ever was. I hope. Yeah. Wow, me too, me too. I mean, uh, you know, you, have you seen? Have you? If you actually been on stage, like with with any of the acts that you've ever interviewed, did they ever bring you on? Did they ever, you know, let you be a part of the show? Anything like that? Not. I mean, not not really. Not any of the. <laughs> not any of the like rock and roll acts. Oh, you that's know, not fair. People have. Um, when I, okay, you ready? When I was two years old, okay. my mother brought me to this hotel. And this man pulled me out, out of the audience, had me come up and, and, and dance with him. And I found out later that was Ike and Tina Turner. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that counts. That counts. That we'll counts. let that count. We're going to let that count. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, I find that, uh, you know, um, being on both sides of the stage, because, you know, I've watched and been a part of other people performing, and then I've been on stage with them performing. So, you know, the counterbalance of both sides. And I tell you what, it's, it's a different journey uh, on either side. It's a different journey to be on the stage than it is to be off the stage. But it's still just as exciting. It's still just as energetic you know the crowd the merchandise tables the bar things like this you know especially if you're like like i had to do i had to do hosting and things like that so i was introducing the acts and and things like this and that just wow you meet so many people and so much so much going on you know when, when when we talk about being the performer you get on stage and it's just you do what your set is right but when you're not on the stage i bet this is probably true for you you're bouncing around like a butterfly trying to 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 get everything and everywhere, yeah? I'm backstage a lot. Oh um, yeah, I bet. So and, yeah. and to me, to me that's really exciting, especially when you have something happen that shouldn't happen and you're like, oh no. And you have to make it work. And you, it just always does work. Yeah. There's no choice. Yeah. But that's a lot, you know, that's a lot of fun for me. That's more fun than than actually getting on stage. I mean, I've I've hosted things in my lifetime. Matter yeah. of fact, I was on Toronto television. Uh, we I was we used to um host a segment of the Star Trek conventions. Okay. So yeah. for that, we're gonna get into all the Star Trek stuff here in a for second. That, yeah. I'm actually on Toronto television. So. Well, <laughs> since you since you brought up the Star Trek, let's go ahead and jump into that now. Let's. From what I understand, you started writing for a Star Trek giant poster book, but that's a that's a publication, and then that led you to creating your own book that was called the Star Trek Medical Reference Book. Now I got to know one thing right off the bat: Are you really that much of a Trekkie? At the time, I was. Am I now? I mean, I love Star Trek. I'll always yeah. love Star Trek. Oh, yeah, there's always there's always a place in my heart for Star Trek. Was I I, I wasn't Trekkie in, in in the sense that I had a crush on Leonard Nimoy, <laughs> or or maybe Mr. Spock. I'm not sure which one. But in in, in that case, yes, I was a Trekkie. But I wasn't like a, a hard a hardcore yeah. days of carrying yeah yeah Trekkie, Hold no. it up. cosplay the whole nine yards yeah yeah. <laughs> Trivia quiz, so I, I knew a lot about it, but uh, so so having a crush on Leonard Nimoy or Mr. Spark, uh, what was it like to be in the circles to to be up close and in person? He was actually the first celebrity I ever interviewed in really? my life. Yes, wow! And I remember sitting in my kitchen on the floor and being so nervous to. to to get that phone call and finally the phone call came and after like three minutes i, I like calmed down yeah, so yeah. I remember being so nervous and yet that nervousness never goes away either never. he was very cool and, and i met him several times and 
you know, I, it was cool. It, he was great. I, yeah. You know, I, I the crush grew and grew and grew. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. <laughs> So, so what do you think about the new the new Star Trek cast with uh, with uh, Chris Chris Pine and and uh, all of them? Um, boy, I tell you what, like that. So my grandfather, he he was he was very much into the Star Trek. Uh, I wouldn't say he was a Trekkie, but he was just very much into the show, right? And so I remember watching it when I when I used to live with them, and and so I do remember some of the older stuff. You know, I remember some of the older movies actually, um, Wrath of Khan and and things like that, right? Um, so when these newer ones came around, I was like, oh, man, you know, here's a, an attempt to try to recreate something that was, you know, glory back in the days. And I didn't think it was going to be too great until I seen the first one. And then I was absolutely hooked. And from that moment on, I call that my my Star Trek now. Like, you know, that, that was my grandfather's Star Trek back in the day. But now we have my Star Trek. And, and I'm really big into them. Like, I, I love I love. I love all of the actors. I've, I've watched all of their rise to glory and everything. And I think they each fit their roles very well. And, you know, I think it done a great job with, what do you think about that Picard? Um, I'm not in love with, with Picard. Really? Not, but I did have the, the one into the darkness. I did get to interview the, um, the director. Oh, wow. Who, who by the way, used my book for, uh, for the anatomy of, of the Vulcan, it was just, which is really cool. Or That's the Robin, great. whatever it was. That's so, great. I, I think that everyone did a great job. I'm not in love with Picard. I think he's a great actor. No, the show, the show Picard. You know, the one that just came out, the 10 episode. Uh, haven't you haven't seen it yet? Oh my gosh, I haven't either. And so like, I'm trying to get people's opinion of it before I go and order it or, or you know, the pay for like Prime or whatever it is, you know what I mean? like. Because, you know, there's a lot of Star Trek spinoffs. And yeah. I don't feel like all of them were that great. Like Deep Space Nine, I wasn't really... No, I didn't love that either. Yeah, you know, so I, 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 I am afraid to go and get all hyped up about something that could potentially turn out to be a disaster, right? So, well, you know, he's a great actor. So, I mean, is. whatever he's trying to pull off, he, he probably will. Yeah. I just wasn't a fan of... of you know, the next generation, I just wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. But then again, I really didn't see a lot of it because I don't have time to see a lot of things that are on television or whatever. But I do, I do want to borrow your pants, though. My pants? Your pants. Can you, like, stand up? They're shorts. They're shorts, yeah. They're, they're, they're like these... Them. Yeah. They, <laughs> it, it's, 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 uh, uh, it's, it's what my wife calls the attempt to look golfer, like a golfer. Yeah, I... I, I Cool. I love my shirt more. The shirt I is more. Shirt. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah. I, 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 I do. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. So anyways, Jimmy and Ron. Now, how did that come to be? Because I've heard variations of the story. And of course, when I interviewed them, they had their sides of it. Now I want to hear yours. I, I, I what, what was your they introduction? <laughs> I have no no comment. No comment. <laughs> so they had me on their show because I wrote a book called Precious Little Devils. And okay. we had a mutual friend who was a publicist yeah. and who actually represented Adam Man. So oh, wow. somehow we had this mutual friend and she asked me if I wanted to be on their show. I said, OK. And I went on their show and I instantly, instantly became friends with them. Matter of fact, the, the week after that, they actually came down to New York. They used to live in, in Pennsylvania and they okay. actually came down to New York. We have um, myself and my gay soulmate that I live with have a house in Cherry Grove. So they, they came out to hang out, to go to Cherry Grove. And, and so I don't cool. know how we actually became really good friends, but it just it just kind of happened. It just like happened. A <laughs> like, like as if we were friends forever and ever. Yeah, and I, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure I, I used to own a gay bar, and I'm pretty sure I knew Ron from back in the day. That's so cool. Tell I us about that. I want to hear where. about that. Tell us, tell us. Well, I can't remember where, but I used to have very light blonde spiked hair, short and spiked and crazy, and he remembered that. So he had to know me because okay. I only did that for a short time. <laughs> so he, he had to have known me. You know, he was probably one of those... Um, he was, he's, you know, so good looking. He probably went in the bar and was one of those that met someone quick and left early. But, um, 
we won't say anything on that yeah. one either. No comment, right? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jimmy. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Goodness, don't, very, now don't be getting me in any trouble with them, okay? <laughs> oh, I'm so going to get you in trouble. <laughs> They'll love it. But, uh, All right, so, go ahead. No, go Ron, ahead. Ron and Jimmy, they're both characters, and, and Ron's yeah. even more of a character. Yeah, and awesome. then um, we, we became friends, like I said, stayed in touch. Then Jimmy and I opened the PR company because we just knew more than anyone else as far as right. content. So we said, let's do it, and it was... We've never had a disagreement or an argument. Never, ever, ever since however long I know him. Not That's even close. Stuff. That's good stuff. I mean, yeah. to, to, have, to have not only the friendship, but to be able to have the business relationship that Correct. is equal to the friendship. That's that's perfect right there. I, 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 yeah. I have to say that, that I'm kind of envious because, uh, you know, that's something that as a business, you know, because the FCR 247 and everything, I, I look for that kind of thing, right? I look for somebody who I can talk to as my normal self, but also operate business and still be my normal self. It's very, very hard. Very, very hard. Most people accept you to be one form of you and can't accept all of you. So it, that that's where you get those muddled lines and everything. So it's absolutely wonderful to hear that not only have you maintained the friendship, but just a great business relationship as well, too. And of course, man, shout out to World Star PR because for... For PR, you guys are like, wow. I mean, <laughs> I, I had a sponsor that was able to to, to lock us in for with, with with you guys for a while, and I tell you what, that was that was probably the happiest time in my career as far as attention. <laughs> I've been struggling for attention for a lot of years, and it was it was very very nice. It was a breath of fresh air to be able to have attention like that, and and. It just, you know, to be received. I mean, that that's that's what every indie artist, every indie artist trying to become something, you know, you, whether they're not trying to become mainstream or whether they are, it's still the objective. You want it, the attention. And so somebody who goes from no attention to having lots of attention, it's like, yes. <laughs> so thank you, guys. It was, it was an amazing. For attention. You look like you need it over there in Toronto. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to just keep having babies. Exactly. <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> All right. Uh, so now, it said that you were a writer for 40 different publications, including, shouts out to Get Out Magazine. Tell us about all of that. So I started to write for Get Out Magazine because I own the gay bar, and it's a gay entertainment magazine. Yep. And the poor publisher came in every week and begged me for an ad, which I, I gave him some ads. But then I was having some pretty famous, well-known RuPaul people yeah. frequent the bunkhouse. It was called the yeah. bunkhouse. And I said, instead of me like doing an ad, why don't you let me write something? And yeah. he said, okay. So I started writing for that. And it, it, the magazine comes out every week. <coughs> so it started every week. Yeah. Um, I would write something maybe once a month. And then every week, and then five just, articles in one in <laughs> one magazine at one time. And then I started to write for Louder Than War because I saw that um, Adam Ant was in it a lot. And that was an English publication. And then I started to write for Huff Post. And then right. I just went on and on and on. I think now it's up to 72 that, that Jimmy and I both write for. Really? Probably, yeah. And, you know, we never, we never got paid for our writing because... We weren't looking for money. We were looking for, I was anyway, for exposure. Attention. attention, exposure. I was looking to give other people attention. And I was looking to get enough of a repertoire in order to be good enough to interview Adam Ant. Because that, yeah. was, that yeah. was my goal in, in writing originally. Now it's, you know, it, it, it's changed. But I mean, it, it was a great goal and it was a lot of fun. And I met and spoke to the greatest people on earth. <laughs> 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 now, now you 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 keep you keep dropping his name. I, I, I'm sensing another crush here. I'm sensing another yeah. another <laughs> love here. Is that is that is that is that what I'm seeing here? It, it, that was definitely a crush. You know, and it <laughs> probably still is in, in some kind of form. But um, yeah, I had a crush on him. There were there were. I had a bucket list. Okay? Yeah, yeah. My bucket list was Rick Springfield, Adam Ant, and Billy Idol. So Rick Springfield actually came to me 
and I got to interview him twice and meet him. Wow. Adam, wow. Man, I was just, I would have done anything, anything. I, I, I was and, just getting ready to say, how, how far did that go? Well, <laughs> you know what? First, before I did the interview, actually, we, we had met, well, not friends, but we had met, and it was a, kind of a weird experience. I met him for the first time at a meet and greet after a concert. Yeah. And he came, he came over to me and, and hugged me. And I was like, that's kind of weird. <laughs> And I kind of felt like I was in the twilight zone. And it was yeah. like one of those awkward hugs, like, oh my yeah, God, like, <laughs> like I didn't know what to do. So I had made him a, like a, a one of those Shutterfly picture books. Because okay. I figured okay. I, I didn't want to like not be able to talk to him because I was starstruck. Right. You know, I didn't want to be like Conversation that starter, a conversation starter. <laughs> yeah. So I handed him the book and he took the book and he went somewhere and then was reading it and left me with his assistant named Adam Ross, who I had been emailing for like years to get an interview with him. So we, we kind of, you know, spoke a little bit. Then he came back and he was asking questions about the book, which is kind of cool. And then he asked me, they gave us these tickets for him to sign. And he said, well, how do you spell your name? So I started to spell it and he stopped. He goes, to Adam Ross, she said, her name's Eileen. I said, listen, you can call me whatever you want to call me. And I thought right. that was so weird. And then he hugged me again, and yeah. I left. And then two weeks later, one of the fans called me, and she goes, they spelled your name wrong. I was like, what are you talking about? Seems he had done a CD. And okay. I had done a review of one of his shows, and they took that review, and they put it on the cover of the CD. And unbeknownst to me, I didn't even know that, my review was on the cover of Adam and CD, but instead That's of calling me Eileen, they called me Ellen. So oh, okay, I, okay. I no copyright or, or sue them or anything like that, oh, right? Sue them? I would have slept with them. I, I would have done anything. <laughs> so so that, that was the beginning of it. And then I met him a, a couple of times more, and I actually even went backstage, and he kissed me once right on the lips. Oh, that's great. I did get See, to interview I, him. But that's what makes life memorable, right? Those yeah. things right there. Those moments like that. That's what makes life worth living for, you know? That moment. That was terrible. I, I bet. I, especially for you, right? I bet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, speaking of Adamant, it, 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 I, I want to say that this book is a creation of your life. It's not necessarily what we'll say as a behind the scenes, because I, I had mentioned this earlier as a behind the scenes, but the more I got to learn about this book, this is really a walk through your life. Um, in a sense. Yeah. In a sense, it, it's what kind of led up to me interviewing Adam Ant. I right. mean, there are behind scenes things of, of people I've interviewed, I've done interviews for because you know my my life up until meeting Anna Man, in my opinion, was boring. So <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> I, want, I want people to understand what made me tick and what made me want to interview him and and how that all came about. So you know, it is about my life to to a certain degree, right. and I try to only put in the interesting parts. <laughs> and so, so I. I, I <laughs> I, you, you say that you, you were only trying to put in the interesting parts. What, what exactly does that mean? Because if for someone like you, who like a two-year-old being on stage um, with Ike and Cena, I mean, that, that's interesting. So is that in the book? It, it actually is in the book because I thought that oh, was Oh, okay. That was okay, really good. Because cool. <laughs> I, I was going to say, I, I, was, I was just getting ready to say, if that's not in the book, then you're not adding all the interesting stuff, no, right? That's so a really cool thing. <laughs> yes, I remembered it years later, but I still didn't know it was Ike and Tina Turner. And I had this conversation yeah. with my mom, who ex you know explained it to me exactly what happened, which was a little different than I remembered it, but not much. Right. And I figured out it was Ike and Tina Turner. I was like, Why didn't you ever tell me that? And she goes, like, "You were blessed. You were blessed by royalty from the very beginning. See that right. they they held you up like Simba in in, in the Lion King, like oh. pretty much." Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. And so, go, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Like that oh, go ahead. Really, you know, stories, cool stories that, that happened to me, you know, with celebrities. 
No. Which, you know, some were really cool. And then I owned the gay bar. So I was, you know, very much a part of the gay community. And those stories are always interesting. Believe me. Trust. I bet. I, yeah. I <laughs> if there's one thing I know, <laughs> I, you know, I, I, I love, I love how, I love how society is starting to become more aware, more woken, um, not just on a racially, you know, racial platform, but also on a, on a sexuality platform. You know, I've grown up uh, my entire life and, and a lot, in fact, some of my oldest, dearest friends are gay. And they have always been mistreated or left outside the box or, or, you know, just things that I couldn't understand, you know, people hating on them for no reason or things like this. And as I've grown through life, I've watched it go from being just Shh, don't talk about it or, or make fun of it to becoming just right on, you know, and, 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 and I'm glad that we've gotten here finally, because I feel like it allows for uniqueness in everybody now. And before you had to fit stereotypes, you had to fit. I remember going to high school and there was five sets. You were the nerds, the jocks, the emos, the gangsters. You, you understand what I mean? There was so much division back then. And now it seems like it's all starting to, to finally just come together. And I'm just, I'm really glad to see that. And I'm glad to hear that. And when I talk to people like you and Jimmy and Ron and Cherie Johnson, it really it's 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 good to be able to tell this story and bring this out because a lot of people especially my age people are tired we're tired of seeing things the way they are so having friends like you who are able to voice your opinions and get it out there and be supportive of that that's what's making the world a better place so people like you and ron and jimmy and sheree johnson these are you guys are you guys are trailblazers in a new way of thinking and that's to be commended that's you know what you're doing a, you're doing a great job i was lucky because in new york growing up there wasn't really any kind of gay nonsense let me call it they, everyone you know who was gay was gay i mean people got annoyed and whatsoever but mostly mostly the crowd that i stayed with they were accepting of straight people which was good that's good yeah <laughs> and, that's very good you know my friends were accepting of, of gay people so it didn't really matter there wasn't that kind of which I'm glad, you know, I'm, I'm glad I grew up that way. And I, I, I grew up in, I grew up in Indiana, which was a, which was a, it's corn fed white boys out there. So right. I, I you can only tell. You had to see that. <laughs> so <laughs> anyway, so, uh, but I, I just wanted to commend you guys because I, I really feel like, I feel like when I talk to you, I'm talking to a pioneer. I'm talking to, I'm talking to somebody who's breaking through walls. And I like that. That to me makes me feel good, right? And you know, like I told you, I was telling you in the message the other day that I, I appreciate the offer to interview other celebrities, and we will definitely get to them. But I had to make sure to get you know Jimmy, Ron, and you, because to me, you guys are you guys are you guys are my royalty, right? I, I look to you guys, and I'm like, you know what? They have a great friendship. They've got a great life. You've got a great mindset. Everywhere you go, people are like, these guys are wonderful people. You're successful. You're independent. These are things that is lost in today's society. And, and boy, I'll tell you what, man. It's, it's good to be able to absorb that from you guys. You know what I mean by that? Twist, can I just tell you something? What's that? I am so impressed with you right now that I can't what? tell you. Jimmy Why? said I would be, too. He said he Why? really did. He said... He said, Twiz is a great interviewer. And I was thinking to myself, maybe, you know, but I, I don't know. When I interviewed you, I thought you, you, were, you were a good interview, but you were a little bit shy. And now, like, you're not shy and you're so <laughs> outspoken. And, and I just I just love your whole deal. Love it. It's, I just need got, to say You got to warm up. Yeah, I got to warm up. You got to jumpstart. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I no, I, it's that. entertainment. Like, it's I think you're a better interviewer than I am. I <laughs> Love it. I might have to take you with me to the red no, top. <laughs> let's go. I, I will definitely go with you. We can interview anybody you want to. But yeah. it, I, I, I have done, okay, so I've done 165 performing shows. But I have done probably 75 interviews. And as with anything with repetition and with practice, 
you you learn how to start to get the hang of it. But I'm a very my I have that kind of personality that people you absolutely do. love. So <laughs> I get soaked up and and you know I. I, I, I love my wife, I love my kids, so I have to limit it or else, you know, other people get get stupid or infatuated. I, so many times some stupid little girlies came along and, and, and googly eyed and it's like, come on, you know, I, I, I run a job. This is a business to me. Yes, I have a great personality, but it's uh <laughs> what's that? Love ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of, speaking of, I, I keep telling you this, you, Jimmy and Ron, okay. I, I've invited you guys for a chicken dinner or whatever, but they have here 24 karat ice cream and it's it's real ice cream with real 24 karat gold on it. And I've gone there, but I, I would love to take I would love me and my wife to take you guys out to to, to, to try this ice cream. man. I, it's like gourmet ice cream. So it's I'm very, so there. Huh? What'd you say? I'm so there. <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Who who can resist ice cream, right? I mean, seriously. <laughs> well, I love All gold. Right. Well, that should work. <laughs> yeah, I love gold. Gold's gold's my thing. You know, everybody's like, well, see, my wife, she loves uh, colored jewelry, like uh, rubies, emeralds, things like that, right? Which is wonderful. But I don't. I, I just love gold. I, I if I could, I. I'd walk around in an armor suit of gold all day, like just. <laughs> <laughs> but it would have to be white gold, you know. Yeah, to make, yes. Like makeup yes. and stuff. <laughs> yes. Well, you know, I do have that pink in my skin, so it could be like a rose gold. I might get there away with go. gold. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's get back to some of these stars, man. So Rosie O'Donnell, Dionne Warwick, Diana Ross, Cindy Lauper. I mean, these are legends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you're standing in the midst of these people, and and what's the first thing that runs to your mind? Is it is it is it fear? Is it nervousness? Is it is it a sense that it just this is going to be an exciting ride? That's a good question. <laughs> I'm going to say it's a mixture of excitement and fear, but the fear only lasts till the first hello. Till the, start, till the ride starts. <laughs> you use that nervous energy. And I used to get all prepared and write my questions out. And then I kind of realized that conversation is better. Just, you know, they, they all want to promote something. Otherwise, they wouldn't be speaking to me. So they're going to they're gonna talk. They're going to lead the conversation. And I think that you have to let them. You know, someone like, I, I've interviewed Dionne Warwick four times. And okay. she's not, she's not very, like you ask her a question and she'll answer the question and then stop like she's waiting for another question gotcha so the last that's time years I, of interviews right well the last time i interviewed her i decided you know what uh, i'm not gonna say a word i'm just gonna let her go on and on and on and she she wound up doing that she wound up doing that and, and then you get people that never shut up yeah. like scott page <laughs> 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 or ron russell <laughs> You can't even get a question in there. You know, they might let you ask one. <laughs> I'm never going to get another interview after this. Thank you. You, you, you got, we're on here bad-mouthing the celebrities. It's it's over, man. <laughs> the celebrities were bad-mouthing, though. Love interviews so much. That there was. <laughs> Scotty Page, though, man. That guy, that guy, you know what? I tell you what. I, I've met a lot of, um, a lot of musicians a lot of performers, a lot of rappers, a lot of, lot of everything. And I'm going to tell you what, that guy, he has what I like to call the well-rounded music career. Right. It's perfect in every way. Just he's got the house, the, the, the fans, the, the, the career, the group, the, the buzz. He's, I mean, not to mention the resume. I mean, some of the things that I've heard about him or learned about him, wow. I mean... And you're 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 rubbing shoulders with these people. I mean, flavor flavor. That page That's... happens to be one of the nicest <laughs> people on the planet, by the way. Yeah. Oh yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. God is he. I've watched uh, 10, 12 different interviews of his. Every one of them, just that kind of guy. And I feel well, like then you, you know he doesn't stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> what no, can you do? What can you do, right? Some people just, that's what they want to do. So, no. I met at an Oscar event with Jimmy. 
Okay. And believing Ron actually had <clears throat> had to go to the bathroom or something, and he was downstairs. And we, we were leaving. We like we're leaving. We're saying goodbye. And then somebody introduced Jimmy to him, and then Jimmy taps me on the shoulder and he says, "You want to meet Pink Floyd?" And I was like, "Do I want to meet Pink Floyd?" Yes. We yes. Went over to him, and within five seconds, he had his phone number in my phone and said, "Yes, I'll do an interview tomorrow." I was like, <laughs> "What could be better than that?" <laughs> Those red carpet events, is that is that where you get most of your people from? Is no. that is no? It's I get more some, clients? I get some, but most of them I, I go to the red carpet things to kind of make my clients walk the red carpet and to mingle and just, just to have a good time. Exactly. but I prefer interviews on a one to one basis, either in person or over the phone. Gotcha. Uh, so you really get to know it for uh, a red copy. You talk to them for three minutes. And, and, and plus, they've got the air on. They, they, they've got their air, their flair. They, they've got to remain dignified yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten some. I've, Jimmy and I do do red carpets ourselves, which is very challenging. <laughs> you have to move the people along, but they want to sit and talk. <laughs> I mean, that's their five minutes. They're going to soak up every second of it, right? It's a lot of fun. But I put. <sighs> I don't prefer, you know, I, I have most of them I have not gotten from a red carpet. Some I have, but most of them was on a one-to-one -one basis where they were promoting something or or I just happened to catch them at the 100%. right time and they were like, yeah, I'll do an interview. So I, I've been I've been really, really fortunate, really fortunate to get these kind of, you know, these kind of caliber celebrities that actually will talk to me. That's what you I'm know, saying. Like, and, and no matter how many I interview, it's still like like a big deal. Every time I interview someone, I, I'm like, oh, my God, I have that I, interview. So cool. I, I, you know, so just as much as I have dreams and aspirations for a music career, um, I have dreams and aspirations for the radio station, right? I mean, you know, the radio station is going to be forever, right? I'm only going to be able to perform for so long, right? So, I mean... I wanted to have something that even when I was no longer to, able to move and, and do, that I still had just an amazing resume that I could speak with equal pride and equal, I am equally talented, you know, as such. But I've, I've always found myself like, man, if I could just get that person, if I could just get that person. So is there anybody out there that you feel like you just... And now I know Adam Ad and, and the Leonard Nimoy's and things like that, but I'm talking, uh, you know, Keanu Reeves, Brad Pitts. Um, yeah. um, huh? I don't no? I'm, I'm not really starstruck. I don't, re case in point, I had to interview Emma Stone. Oh. And Emma Stone's pretty big. Yeah. And yeah. she was an in person interview. I had to go to the city and I called up Jimmy that day and I said, Jimmy, is she worth go? I didn't even know who she was. That's how bad I am. I said, is she worth going all the way to the city? Boy, he goes, are you crazy? That's Emma Stone. You better go. <laughs> so I'm not starstruck like that. Yeah. I, 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 want to, I want to interview Billy Idol. So if anyone listening out there has a contact, just I'll give you my phone number. I'll go to bed with you. Whatever I have to do. Not <laughs> I, I gotta ask, were you a hippie? I gotta ask, were you a hippie? I, I was. I because you are really into that whole peace, love, and freedom thing. Like you are. Oh, totally. Yeah. totally. I just have a flower on my face and take my guitar over my shoulder and, yeah. and go to Central Park. I think I was ten when my mother first let me allow me to go. Oh and wow! I, and I was figuring, why is she letting her ten-year-old daughter travel to Central Park? But my yeah. mother was kind of a hippie. She was kind of like. Whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, I was a hippie. I still am, I think. Hey, I, I, I was going to say, it, it, the, the, the aura is still there. You're still very much radiating that. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So, you've, 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 different, you've experienced all these different cultures, not cultures, um, let's say um, generational changes, okay? Uh, obviously, from, from that time period to now where we've got mumble rap and, and all these other stupid things. What do you feel like, or when, let me let me explain, when do you feel like was the best time for music? Was it the 60s, the 70s, the 80s, 90s, today? When do you feel was just the decade for music 
in every way. The 80s. Wow, the really? 80s. Yeah. Big you hair, bands, power, they, rock, the whole nine yards, huh? You know what? There was MTV and there were videos yeah. and the music was great and the times were great and the movies. Were, it was just a great time. So, and, and if you're going to argue with me about it, I'll come over and I'll get you. I'll hunt you down like a wild I'm man. saying 90s, so we're arguing. Oh, I said no. 90s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but there was something about the clash between there was a there, there was a clash going on of grunge and alternative. But on the other hand, you had a, a, a struggle going on between um, R&B and rap. So you had things like John B and you had like uh, uh, Joe to C and Genuine and people like that vying for attention against people like Snoop Dogg, Dre, Coolio. OK. I, I mean, we're talking some of the greatest musical acts of all time. I mean, the 80s is great, don't get me wrong, but only great for, like, power rock bands and big hair bands. Name a group outside of, like, you know, long-haired poison-looking kind of people <laughs> that, you know, really had... There wasn't... Maybe Cindy Lauper. I think she was, like, in 80s, wasn't she? Cindy Lauper. Sure. Yeah, sure. so... I did her 12 times. <laughs> really? Uh -huh. Really? I what was she like? She's very business and she's very nice. She's business she's though. She's more outspoken. She seems like she'd be very. She's in your. She's not really. She's really? normal, like normal, like cool. You know, she was definitely cool. But you know, and I went to the thirtieth anniversary of the Yo MTV Rap thing. Oh man, that's awesome. Right, right. That's I, so I awesome. happen to be very good friends with Dr. Dre, the that. real Dr. Dre. Real one, right? <laughs> <The> one <Yeah. laughs> People have to clarify that nowadays. The real Dr. Dre, yeah. The one that did the MTV thing yeah. with uh, Ed Lovers. And, and it, it was the most amazing time that I ever had. I mean, Flay, Flay was, Flavor was there. He was, Fat Joe was there. And just just about anyone you could ever name that, that did rap. You know, and, awesome. and the thing was, we had access to their dressing rooms. And, and it was an all-day event. So that's, that's, it was probably the coolest thing I ever did. No, that was eight. That was eighties, dude. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm still gonna say nineties. I stick to my nineties, but no, <laughs> yeah, we, we will say we will be in agreement though that today has kind of strayed away from quality music, quality entertainment. Today, sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Who who do you who who so uh, who who are you with today? Like who who do you support today? Who do you say is a good good uh, entertainer today? Twism White Peace. <laughs> uh, besides besides the king. The king, I love it. Uh, I think that there are many indie artists out there that are better than many of the artists on on the radio. I like Billie Eilish because she's different. Um, who else? You know what? I don't really love anyone out there. See? Like See? I really want to think, <laughs> and I'm just, I'm just not, I'm not getting it. So, I, you know, the music I think today is, is, it's flat. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the people are talented, but it's just a, a flat kind of nothing special kind of. Like, sounds the same. Like the soul's been taken out of it. You know, like like the soul. There's no soul in music anymore. Correct. You know, we're talking you about know, the 80s. And, go the ahead. Artist, there's no vinyl anymore, hardly, a, a, unless that's, you know, something that a record company does special. Right. There's no, you can't walk into a record store. You just stream it. Like, how boring is that? So I think that the music is just following suit to, to the way we have to listen to it. Land and, and tasteless. The artists, how do they make money? I yep. mean, streaming is sometimes even free. And you need like a billion streams to make a dollar ninety nine. Like, why should they put out good music? I, you know, and on top of that, it it's become it's it's become polluted. The streaming services they allow anybody and everybody, uh -huh. meaning you you don't have to be established, you don't have to be verified, you don't have to have a resume, and you definitely don't have to show any kind of foundation, and you can suddenly be whatever you want to be. And with the DIY metadatas now and, and, and everything, it's just, I remember when we used to have to 
burn our CDs and we would, if you messed up even one little thing during recording, you'd have to re-record the whole song. There was no such thing as, as five minute songs. Each song took a long time to make. And because right. it took so long to make, you were pouring out your heart and emotion into it. And I think, like you said, because the world has become a streaming fast paced place, so has the music. The music has become just rushed. Right. Everybody's like, okay, here's another one, here's another one, here's another one. I, I myself am a victim of that, but that is because you have to meet your fans' demands. And when your fans are being thrown out with so much different music all the time, you really got to either come with something that is just so unique, or you have to consistently put out quality music to show that you're capable of battling back with everybody else who's just throwing in everything and i am really lucky because the people we represent that do music they're really different yeah, they're really yeah. different uh, they're not your usual yes what you hear so in the radio people and and if they do get get to go on the radio it, it'll be different and they'll they'll develop their own fan base yeah. so yeah. but i i still feel bad for them because how do they make money they're they you know i I'll tell you firsthand. I, I haven't. I'll tell you firsthand. I haven't made a single dollar since last year, and I was making good money last year. I had sponsor money, I had client money, and I had good royalties coming in. And then the entire world just changed. It was like the flip of a light switch. You know, everything just went different, and I used up all my savings and just started losing client after client because they couldn't afford to maintain their own small businesses or whatever. Sponsors started leaving. What do you do? For a lot of people out there, that was a, a psychological blow. They totally I couldn't take it. I mean, I know some people who really went off the deep end because their entire life was no longer entertainment and they didn't know what to do with their lives. Totally. Should have had a backup plan. Should have had a backup plan. I will say this much. I was well, blessed. That to happen. <sighs> in the wildest dreams. It's like a bad movie. No, yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, I will say nobody would have ever seen this coming. Nah. And, and, and even, even if somebody had, who would have believed them? Who would have believed the person tell and that would have been like an end of the world you would have been like the crazy homeless man sitting on the corner with a sign that says the end of the world's coming people would have walked right past you and not even paid twice to you see and that's that's the reality of it sometimes it takes that slap on the back of the head in order to get a message through so. exactly and it's going to be a long time before things are normal oh yeah oh yeah but. we are actually we have to decide right now whether or not we want to send our children back so we were in agreement and we were like, you know, Toronto didn't have it that bad. And we, we, we feel comfortable enough until just yesterday. And just yesterday, they switched the school super superintendents of the, of the school board or whatever. So the guy who was there before said, well, they need to wear masks and they've got a social distance and class sizes are only going to be this big, so on and so forth. Well, now the new guy comes in and he says, no. Nah, there's not enough evidence to prove that it's harmful to them, so on and so forth. So within 24 hours, the numbers of parents sending their kids in just changed. People, right. we're not going to risk it, right? Because like you just said, this could be years. This could be a long, long time before there's any resolution to this. Totally. My, totally. Yeah. I, I, so, you know, I'm just thankful that in our situation – we were smart and prepared, even though we didn't know we were supposed to be smart and prepared, right? So, we call were it dumb. dumb. What's that? <laughs> we were dumb, but we got smarter. <laughs> yeah, that's what I said. Call it dumb luck. Yeah. So, now speaking of messages, waiting for Adam, interviews and obsessions. I want to go back to this because obviously this is the topic of the interview, but more importantly, because I feel like this is an expressive form of you you're so busy expressing for everybody else that you finally get the opportunity to express for yourself and so i want to go back and i want to talk about what it was like to try to put the book together to remember the memories to 
to get it all organized? Was that was that a trial? Was that a struggle? How long did that take? Um, three years. <laughs> wow, really? But the, the thing is, it, it took three years. I had the thought for a year, and then I, I put some things together. I did it. When I'm a really slow writer. When I do an introduction for, for an interview, it, it could take me 24 hours sometimes because I want to get it right. I want, I want to do the best that I can possibly do. But once I had the first couple of chapters ready, the rest of it, a lot of it were, were the interviews. So I sat down one weekend and in my mind put everything together and then put everything together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, I've got to say it took Three years, but it really took two weeks. Does that make sense? Yeah, oh, of course. I, 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 I feel like that's been my life. <laughs> <laughs> Working up for a moment, you know, like, you, but, but that's what it is. You, you put all and everything and you work so hard for so long. And then when it all finally comes together, it seems like it was only that long that it took to come together. But each getting each piece for it to come together took months or years or whatever the case may be. That's how it always is. Great works of art are never done overnight. I, I don't. I, right. I can't think of one work of art that was done overnight. So that's, that's true. Yet people, musicians, can write a song in an hour, <laughs> and it's like the biggest hit ever. <laughs> All right. I, I, How long does I, it take I, you <laughs> to write uh, to write a real song, or to write just just a, a, a like a, a real song? Twenty five minutes. Twenty minutes. Twenty five minutes. Uh, you give me one topic and I already know how to put it together. But I have years of experience. I have years of songwriting experience. I have a vocabulary that is expansive. So 25 minutes for me is nothing really. I mean, that that's, you know. It, so let me see. If it takes you 25 minutes to write, say, a three or four minute song, mm -hmm. so... I should be able to give you a topic and you can write at least, at least 30 seconds of it. So here you go. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's try this. Okay. Topic is going to be, I want to think of a one that's not like money or, or. Yeah. Or, right. Or love Do something or challenging. Do something challenging at least. Something right. Something challenging. Yes. Okay, the topic is going to be your greatest challenge. Okay, and 30 seconds, right? Seconds. And while Count you're me down. While Count you're me down. Running, I'll just take over your show. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that you you wrote the Jimmy Star Show theme, and, and which they love to death. <laughs> and you've written some really good music. So I want to see what Thank you can you. do with 30 seconds and 15 seconds left. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of leeway. Time. Dream. Okay. Let's see what you got. My hopeless sin. There we go. All right, ready? Sitting uh -huh. with Eileen, starting with a dream. It's all up in my mind. I just got to find the line that connects. When to success, yes, I got to be the best. It's really nothing easy. It's really hard to recollect. I got to go. I got to win. My biggest fear is to my hopeless sin. And then I, <laughs> I was trying to get, <laughs> oh. I tried. I got it. So ready? Now, uh, without all the so nervousness. Fresh. Without all the nervousness. Ready? Without all the nervousness. Do it. Sitting with Eileen, I'm staring at a dream. It's all up in my mind, just got to find the line that connects when to success. I got to be the best. I'll never, ever forget. It's an easy recollect. I got to go. I got to win. My biggest fear, my hopeless sin. Nothing but a dream. It's nothing but a dream. Everywhere I go, it's all up in my dreams. It's nothing but a dream. It's easy, man. It's Song structure is the biggest problem. Excuse people... me, but you finish that song. I'll just make it the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's it's OK. So strong structure. Right. A lot of people feel like they've got to say everything that they can possibly say in 16 or 32 bars. And song structure is about precision. It's about punching smart. It's about not just sitting going like this. It's about. You know what I'm saying? So you got to really. 
there's only so many ways to say everything. You understand what I'm saying? Hence the reason we started creating images, because pictures are worth a thousand words, and I could say the same thousand words in 15 different songs, and it would never be the same, but it would always be the same. You get what I'm saying? Yes, I love that. And then that's how it is with, you know, like Ice Cream or any of these other songs. Everybody's like, you know, especially like Wake Up, Wake Up America, things like this. They were like, how did you put this together? How did you do this? I had a message. I wanted to tell people to change for the better, or I wanted to tell people that we could be smooth and saucy like ice cream. But I don't need to go and say it, ah, la, 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 ice cream, you know? You think of ice cream. Shorty thinks I'm sorry, just like ice cream, you know? It's yeah, simple. Yeah, but nobody thinks of ice cream in the same way as you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, all right. So anyways, let's round this out because we're about at the time here. And, right. and you know, I, I know you're busy. And of course, I've got my five that are anxiously waiting to get back to their life. And I just want to say that, you know, spending time with you now and, and interviewing you is is has made it all that much more fun and more amazing. And of course, now I know that there's going to be a great connection forever now um, because you know, it's one thing to, like you said, business with people, but then it's another thing to establish a connection, a friendship, a face-to-face, -face, a personal interaction. And now that we've done that, I, it's just like with Jimmy and Ron. You, you're amazing, and I know, I know that you, we're on the same wavelength. We're on the same path. We've got the same joy and excitement for life, but at the same time, the same appreciation for life. And I, I want to say... Eileen, it was a pleasure to sit with you and, and see a side of you that doesn't normally get to be seen because everybody always wants to bring out a different side of you. So, um, you know, uh, thank you for taking your time. And, and I just want to allow you a moment here to tell anybody anything, uh, hope, uh, dream, uh, keep going for it. Whatever your final words are, here's your chance. All right. Well, my final words are actually to you, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I always admired you. I did. I thought your songs were cool and fun and whatever. But I am so impressed with you now. Oh, my <laughs> God. I have to say that. I, I really do. You're a, a, a great songer, a great rapper. <laughs> but you're a great radio host. I can Everybody's, see Everybody I tells can see me. Everybody says... It. Yeah, everybody says I should be the radio host. They're like, why are you wasting your time trying to be a rapper? You could be the next. <laughs> you, can, you can do both. You can Ryan do Seacrest or something. Rappers. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you're I, amazing. I, and I want to thank you for this opportunity. And you, you're, you're very special. And you know what? The world needs to know you better. So I would like to wish the world... That they get to, that they get to know you the way I know you and the way that Jimmy and Ron know you and and that's what I wish on the world because it I would be a that. better place and the story. <laughs> I keep trying to tell everybody this. Nobody <laughs> believes me. I Maybe keep saying if you me. just make Twism White Piece the go-to guy, the world will get better. I I mean you know not, not <laughs> totally. <laughs> All right, Miss Sweet Eileen, you have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for this. And of course, everybody, go ahead, go out to Amazon right now and get the book, Waiting for Adam, Interviews and Obsessions by Eileen Shapiro. It is guaranteed to be the number one bestseller of this year. And shouts out to B. Claudia. She has really repped your book. I mean, she is just like, she is a big fan of you guys, man. She is right there, always supportive on the planet as well love her yeah just yeah, making these little me, creative gippies and yes yes <laughs> right yeah if I the could make on. my own world it would be you b <laughs> ron half the time and scott <laughs> you have a perfect world anyway. you, you would there would never be a dull moment there would never, never ever be a dull moment <laughs> Uh, but, of course, this show was brought to you not only by World Star PR, FCR 247, but BRRS Media and, of course, Sweet Euro Trash. So make sure that you go ahead and remember to stay super saucy, focused on getting money, God first, family over everything. And until we see you again, hit the website www.fcr247.com and be blessed in your steps.